Hello, beautiful people of the internet. How are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Oh boy, let me tell you, I have had a super busy day today. I am getting ready to leave tomorrow for my first post-pandemic vacation. Super excited, but I have had a crazy day and I need to finally film this video before the sun goes down. But I hope this is one that you are really going to like because in this video today, I am going to be guessing books based off their one star Goodreads reviews. I have my mom here off camera to help me with this one. Basically earlier today, I gave her carte blanche to go on Goodreads and find one star reviews for any books of her choosing. As long as it was a book that I had read, it was free for her picking. So I really don't know what to expect. She could have picked one star reviews of my favorite books, one star reviews of books that I hated, one star reviews of books that both her and I have read. I honestly don't know what she might have picked and I am excited to give this a try. I might do terribly at guessing but hopefully there will be some funny moments along the way. <laughs> I got this video idea from a video on Murphy Napier's channel. I'm sure a bunch of other people have probably done something similar to this, but her video was the one that inspired me to give this a try because it seemed like a lot of fun. I don't really have rules or anything for this video. I think what we discussed is that she is going to read the reviews to me with any information that would give away what book it is taken out. And then if I am really struggling, I will ask her for hints. We are going to try to do five reviews in this video. So let's just jump right into it and see how this goes. I am excited and also scared. Also, one more thing, feel free to play along at home and let me know in the comment section how many of these you guessed correctly. When I read classics, it's not all about just reading them. I'm also trying to discover what's made them classics. Okay, so this is a classic. Got that far. The first half, the first half is entertaining enough. Around halfway through, as plots and threats have failed, to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Don't misunderstand me. Nothing else happens. Nothing. That's it. On and on for hundreds of awful pages. No, no guess yet? This is super vague. Um, is it like a Jane Austen novel? No. No? So it's a classic. You want me to continue reading? Yes. Oh, that wasn't the end? There's yeah. more? Okay, keep going. There are parts of Atlas Shrugged that are better than the latter half of this book. It sucks so hard, man. I'm sad. I'm so sad that I read it. <laughs> this okay. could be like any classic. Blank was important in its time. It's characterization and use of the epistolary. Oh, was, so it's told via letters. Was groundbreaking and it, it influenced great authors like Jane Austen. <gasps> Is this Pamela? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I like I think the final thing he says about this is if you're not an academic you don't need to uh, read this in your life. <laughs> I think one of the main things that sparked my distaste was the style of writing. It felt detached and lines such as person A is glad that person B is gone. She thinks he's reckless and is glad he's gone seemed unskilled, sloppy, and rushed. I do not doubt that Blank is a talented woman, but for me, the greatness of a book rests largely on the skill of the writing, and the writing of the book was definitely not uh, what carried it. The third-person narrative of multiple characters 
gave the whole book a transparent feel with no secrets being kept as we gain insight into all their thoughts, but yet the insight was brief and each character simply wandering. Okay, let's pause for a second. So we can gather from this that the author is female. And this is a book with multiple perspectives told in a third person narration. Okay, that doesn't give me a lot to go off of. Um, so keep reading. <laughs> what else is there? Premise is intriguing, set out to be a cleverly shaped murder mystery. However, that's all I can say with regard to praise. I've seen many a good review, so it might just not have sat right with me personally, but it really just didn't tick many boxes. Is this an Agatha Christie? It is not. Okay. So is it a modern mystery? Yes. <laughs> you didn't sound confident when you said that. <laughs> I didn't look at the year the book was published. Oh, so you haven't read this? I have not read this book. Um, this review is from three years ago, so it's not that new. Is this like one of my favorite books? I don't know. I mean, would you like me to see what you? So this is it? just something you randomly picked off my what? red shelf. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be anything. <laughs> Uh, Who knows what it is? <laughs> Secondly, in my opinion, I think that when you read a crime slash thriller once finished the book and understanding what happens, you should be able to think to yourself, how did I miss that? Realizing that there was, were many clues, subtle clues, entwined into the narrative, there was none of that. I felt unbothered by the reveal finding it unsatisfying and not much of a shock due to it coming completely from the blue. Okay, I had something in mind, but I don't think that book really has a reveal. I was thinking, is it The Secret History by Donna Tartt? It is not. Okay, so this is a mystery that I gave four stars, you okay. said. There was and you said that you had to go really far to find a one-star review. Okay, there was nothing to ever suggest that what happened would happen, making what should have been a huge shock no more than a, oh, okay, then. <laughs> a reveal needs to put, uh, put from things, oh, pull from things already hinted, ripping up what we think we know, turning it on ahead, on its head. You said you haven't read this. I have not. Is that all there is? Is there more? Um, uh, yeah, basically. I have no idea what this is. Oh, so, I'll tell you the, I'll so, tell you so that. wait, so it's a, by a female author. It's a mystery. It has multiple third person perspectives. I rated it four stars. You have not read it. I don't believe so. I could have, but I, I, I don't, I don't remember the plot. Let me read some of the book description. Okay. Okay. Why'd you say, oh? I did read this book. Oh, you <laughs> did read this book? Well, you threw me off then. All right, as soon as I read the description, you both know what it is. Sometimes I lie. No. The Wife Between Us. No. Silent Patience by a Man. Ah, just tell me what it is. I'll tell you this, and you should know immediately. A weekend retreat at a cozy, cozy mountain lodge. Oh, <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> Um, what's it called? Uh, an unwanted guest. Ding, 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 ding. And I literally thought of that when you were reading the review, but I was like, no, she's read that one, so that's not the right answer. Are you me? How do I know? I don't remember titles. <laughs> okay, so my mom just messed me up with that one and threw me off the right track because she lied to me. Oh. Good to know. <laughs> this is the most badly written book I have ever read. Blank is a bad version of the rather dodgy film Cruel Intentions with a generous dash of soap opera. 
Okay, so... I don't like to be the bad guy, and by the bad guy, I mean the type of reviewer who writes harsh reviews and is overly critical about certain genres. I always try to remind myself that people will have a different tastes, and it isn't fair to be too critical or rude about a book. In this case, however, I can't quite comprehend how this book has so many positive reviews. What in the whole history of literature is happening? Have I landed in some alternative reality? Did I read in a completely different book? <laughs> okay. Cruel intention. So like a seduction? I do not expect all psychological thrillers to be as well written as a blank blank. While I do consider some of the authors that I read to be guilty pleasures, I do not believe in the existence of lowbrow fiction. I started blank thinking that it would be one of the many, far too many, blank wannabes. Or I should say gone girl wannabes. I didn't expect to be mind blown, but I was hoping to read a suspenseful and entertaining mystery which revolves around the typical triangle people with shifting power dynamics, betrayals, jealousy, yada, yada, yada. Is this the wife between us? No. <laughs> okay, keep going. So a thriller, Gone Girl, Cruel Intentions-esque love triangle. The unbelievable and one-dimensional characters, the predictable and laughable twists where I could address the main problem, the writing. This novel, calling this a novel feels wrong, is so badly written that I am surprised it was published in the first place. Okay, so have you read this book? Yes. Okay. Blank is the typical lead, forgettable and a blend of toothpaste, as a blend toothpaste. <laughs> She thinks okay. she is different from others because of a traumatic event, which might or might not be her own fault. Is this sometimes I lie? No. <laughs> um, so it's a thriller that you have read. Is it by Ruth Ware? No. <laughs> Um, would you like me to read more? Yes, I would. But you've read. Blank's point of view included a lot of cheesy observations. We are believe we are to believe that her focus is on making money and her family, but really all she cares about is clothes. She sounds like an effing Adver. Is it? Did you say if the, did you say if the author was a man or a woman? I don't know if I did say. I don't know by the name. Oh, interesting. So somebody with initials, maybe. Ooh, or is it no? Because he doesn't have a book like that. I was gonna say, is it a Riley Sager book? Because I know you read those, but none of those involve a triangle. Do they? <clears throat> Quote from the book, her neck is long and graceful and no amount of contouring can create the kind of cheekbones she possesses. <sighs> what is this? I don't know. It's a person with initials or something that sounds gender neutral. And you also read this. I think so. Again, you think don't, so. Don't, don't, don't. We know that you're unreliable. On Correct. Of that. Um, How about I give you a big hint? Yes, please. There's a doctor in the book. A doctor? There's a doctor in the book. Would you like me to give you a character's name? Yeah, sure. You want to put the tape back on? It is on. Oh, Jessica. 
Jessica. Oh, this is an anonymous girl? Yay! Yes! You know what's so funny is this book was so unmemorable that every time I talk about it, I forget the main character's name is Jessica, and I call her some other generic white girl name like Ashley or Caitlin because I can never remember her name. But this time I did. <laughs> Years ago, I participated in one of those interminable, minable, that the word, uh, debates about the effect of Harry Potter on culture. Okay. <laughs> and this isn't a Harry Potter review? <coughs> blank. Later, Blank, author of the acclaimed The First Law Trilogy, wrote a young adult book, and many of my friends who were fans were disappointed. They preferred it because of darker adult work. For myself, I really didn't care since I was, wasn't a fan and found him pretty adolescent anyway. And now, Blank has joined the game. Who's next? <laughs> what is this, is this person happening? talking about? <laughs> People who write trilogies. So this is a trilogy? Book and a trilogy. Does every author have a publisher standing right behind them chanting, Dumb down, cash in. Dumb down, cash in. And they crack and crap. Crack and crap. <laughs> they crack and crap. <laughs> oh, so anyway, can we at least say that the question of whether Blank writes science fiction is settled? She does not. This is science fiction? He says it isn't. <laughs> well, what does this guy know? <laughs> I don't read science fiction. Back in 1985, the author made it clear that she wrote speculative fiction, not science fiction. Wait. That was chemicals and rockets. <laughs> this doesn't sound like anything I would read. I'm so confused. <laughs> it doesn't matter in blank that the world building was shaky because that wasn't the point of the story. It was cramped and painful character study of survival under totalitarian. This is this a Hunger Games review? No. Yeah, I didn't think Suzanne Collins was that old. And that, so this author was writing in 1985? How suffering doesn't necessarily make us better, how power corrupts. <laughs> you sure I read this? <laughs> I'm astonished to see people happy that blank tells us so much more about blank because it doesn't. We still don't know exactly what the religion of blank is since it's hardly related to the current popular. We don't know how it managed to seize control. Did it have popular support? If so, why? How did they manage to convince American soldiers to turn on their own? And they <laughs> did. How did they defend the U.S. military? Oh, is this is Where, this is this like The Handmaid's Tale? Ding 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 ding. Oh, but that's not a trilogy. He talks about it being a trilogy. I don't well, know what he is. What does this guy know? Well, apparently he knows what they all said back in 1985. <laughs> but he doesn't know this isn't a trilogy? One star because I loathe blank and blank, what's his name? Morally shady, immoral characters have never appealed to me. And whenever I count them, I end up ruining the entire experience. Okay. Walter's narrative was boring, and I do not agree that she was... I do agree that she was shallow and quite idiotic. There was an entire chapter dedicated to describing Planck's experimentation with jewelry and embroidery, which was so completely mind-numbing, I skipped it altogether. Wait, so are they saying the author is a woman or the main character is a woman? I'm sorry, I didn't know your question. Is the, well, they said she is shallow and idiotic. Do they mean a character or do they mean the author? I don't know who they mean. I think they mean a character. Okay, well that was not helpful. <laughs> Continue. Okay, so this I don't understand the author's insistence that blank, or any work of art for that matter, ought to be assessed based on its artistic, aesthetic value and not on whether it carries a moral message. 
because I love it when the book I'm reading is trying to convey something. I actually feel this book contains a moralistic idea uh, that one should never fully indulge one's whims and passions without considering their consequence. And that physical beauty means very little when you are at an abhorrent human being on the inside. I would also condemn a work of art if I found it preaches, encourages, praises, or otherwise tries to present in a positive light any action or idea that I consider to be moral. This person sounds like they're fun at parties. Okay, here we go. Wait, okay, hold on a second. So, physical beauty, aesthetic value, it sounds like almost like Dorian Gray, but that's by a man and there's no female characters. But you are ding, 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 right! Oh, well, who are they talking about when they said she? Sybil Vane's narrative? Oh. Line? Who the hell is Sybil? <laughs> who the hell is Sybil indeed? Who is she? Who is Sybil? <laughs> Were there any other good parts of the review that you wanted me to hear? <laughs> um, no, just to, I think he sounds like he uh, is a homophobic, the review. Oh, well, that's lovely. <laughs> uh yeah, well, we don't care about homophobes' opinions, so. Let's see if any. Well, everyone, I feel like my performance in this was abysmal, but hopefully you enjoyed watching it. And let me know in the comment section how you did at guessing these books from their one star reviews. My mom picked out some really hard books here that just were not the first things that would have come to my mind, so I feel like I really struggled with that, but hopefully it was fun. If you enjoyed this, I could definitely do a part two with one-star reviews of other books, so let me know in the comment section if you would like to see a part two to this video concept. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see it more from me. I post new videos every single Wednesday. My social media links are down below if you want to follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, or be my friend on Goodreads. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a marvelous rest of your day. Bye, and I'll see you in the next video.